We're on our second party, our first day of art parties, and we're really excited to be here. And we're gonna get started. Uh, before we get started, I do want to I do want to cheer, have a time moment of cheers. So feel free to unmute and video your, and open your video up because we love to see you. And just say cheers. Surprise, I know you. Cheers. 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 Yes. Happy 2021. Okay, we're still letting people in, but I'm gonna get started because we wanna make sure we're on time and we wanna have uh, some fun time for our after party where we get to uh, open up the chat, open up our mics and speak and just answer questions. But for the meantime, we are going to mute everybody while we're doing the presentations. And uh, I think we're ready to get started. So hello, welcome. I am Megan Patrice Riley of Megan Patrice Riley Jewel Jewelry. And I'm one of the co-founders of Art Party Central. And I'm super excited to be your host for tonight. We have six amazing, talented artists here. And we're going to go on. We're going to learn a ton about them, their process, their designs, and um, have some time to to try some stuff on at the end. So uh, I wanna also shout out to our admin, Nora Swan, she's in the chat. We're gonna have the chat open, although we don't have our mics on, we do encourage everybody to put um, questions in the chat, comments, we love that. We're gonna keep popping links in there. So if we're talking about items, we'll try to link that item. We'll be talking, putting people's websites in there as well. Sometimes it's really fun and helpful. And at the end, we, you will be receiving an email and that will have all those, we'll have the websites. So you don't have to necessarily write all those down right now. We'll make sure we follow up with all the information. So we have six artists and I'm excited to be hosting Carla Goodian of Carla Goodian Art and Design, one of the other co-founders of Art Party Central. And we also have Shana Croys from Shana Croys Jewelry, Nina Valenti of Nature Versus Future, Sue Shannon from Sue Chi Pottery, Arza from Arza Design, and Sam Stone from Swan and Stone Millinery, a one of one of our another one of our co-creators of Art Party Central. Art Party Central. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the party's going to shake out, and then we're going to get go in on presentations and hear a little bit about from each artist. So we have six artists. And we have, we're gonna be asking about one to two questions per artist. So keep putting those questions in the chat. We may not get to all of them during the presentations, but we're gonna have time at the after party to go a little bit more in depth and maybe do a little like, see some things up close. At the end of the party, we will be raffling off one of one gift certificate, one fifty dollars gift certificate per website. So that's six chances to win. And we do ask that you stay till the end to be present to win, so, you know, stay tuned. We're also giving everybody a special discount code because we do value you and we really appreciate you. It's our gift to you. All of the artists tonight, as well as the co-hosts and hosts are all giving this. So stay tuned for that as well. And we'll also be doing our little after party. So we'll have time to kind of go more in depth and maybe uh, uh, answer more questions. So let's get to the fun stuff. Our first artist is Carla Goodian of Carla Goodian Art and Design. Carla, please take it away. Hello, can we hear me? Yes, we're not, not okay. good. I'm good, right? Okay, perfect. perfect. So nice to see everybody. Happy New Year. I am so happy to be back at our party central. I feel like my social life has returned. Um, <laughs> and for those of you that don't know me, I am Carla and it's Carla Goodian Art and Design. And while I have all sorts of goods and gifts and products for the home, most of my focus is on my original artwork, which I've been doing for 20 years. And most of my artwork is hand watercolored engraving, um, which I decided because it's the first new year, I'll do something I don't usually try to do. I'm hoping not to be klutz about it, but I do wanna show you my major piece of machinery, which is like my third child right here in my studio. So a little bit of an inside peek here. And can we see it? I need Megan. Can you tell me if we can see the press? I can see it. Absolutely. That is okay, awesome. Great. So every ah, now the trick, as I said this the first time, is to get it back without falling off my chair because I am sitting on three stools 
pile tie because I'm short. Um, <laughs> every piece goes through the press and what goes through the press is a metal plate that I've designed with my work on it. So the lines are incised into the metal. I ink the plate, wipe the surface of the ink is only in the lines and then pull it through my press to get the outline. And that's this beautiful embossment here, the mark of something handmade is where the metal plate pushed into the paper. And the next step after that is to go in with watercolors. So here we go. And this is what it looks like once I put the paint on. So because they're all hand painted, even when I repeat colors, no two can ever come out exactly the same. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to focus on today for people that have seen me before, people that haven't, um, it really is this whole thing with change in the new year. And we've moved into 2021 where I know we all have a lot of hopes and thoughts. And last week I turned 60, which is a start of a big decade for me. And we all, you know, I don't, I like, I like these new periods as periods of change. But I don't like the word resolution because I freaking blow it. You know, it's like you make a resolution and the next week you've blown it. So I came up with this thing for me this year that seems to be working, which is I'm calling them self-care goals for the decade. So this way I have this list of things that I'd like to see happen the way I did in the 50s. And as if it happens slowly or it doesn't happen right away, I like this concept and I like this concept of all of us moving from a really difficult time into a period where we could be kind of revolutionary about our self care and doing things for ourselves that fuel us. So in looking around my collection, I realized that I've already designed things to move me forward that I hear from my customers also help them. So, you know, what better time than to treat yourself when we're all at home so much with something at home that'll make you happy. So for this period of new beginning, the most obvious one is my for every ending a beginning. And I had originally created this when I went through a tough time in my life, but now I'm embracing it again differently as a new beginning. And this is time to put some stuff behind me and move forward. And another piece also with the butterfly that I think suits that same idea is born to stand out. And it's the idea that I'm 60. If I'm not going to be who I want to be, if I'm have any, you know, if I'm not fearless about showing my true self now, when would I? I mean, and it does help to have good friends that make cocktail hats, you know, when you'd want to do this. So, and then a lot of you have seen my little ones collection. And my little ones, I love because they can fuel you or a friend in such an easy way. And it's such an easy thing to pop into a little nook between two doorways or a powder room or something that you're going to see first thing in the morning. And I repeat a lot of those messages. So we have the true colors and the born to be bold. And again, those are statements of being myself and being yourselves and being proud of it. A big one, I think, for 2021 is uh, let it go, because we all have a lot we have to let go. A friend of mine sent me a list of questions that included, like, get rid of anything that doesn't serve you, be it a physical object in your home or a mental state of being. And I think let it go is such a great message. And then because I want to freaking Marie Kondo everything and like, you know, the clutter is we have nesting. And nesting comes with one egg or two, but I think I really like all the little details I got in my nest. And then some of the things are things I wish for you, um, as well as me in this new period, which are things like breathe and hope. And those are all affirmations of positive things that I think we'd like to surround ourselves with. Same thing, I'm choosing my pomegranates and my peace. And pomegranates are really great because in a, many different cultures, and I know I love myself some cross-cultural themes, pomegranates mean abundance and fertility and things that bring you life. And particular to Judaism, a pomegranate will have 613 seeds, which represent the commandments or mitzvot, good deeds you do in your life. And I like the idea of reminding myself of living a full life with the pomegranates. And I do have a friend that counted and she said, it is just a legend, but it's close. <laughs> and finally, a couple of others are my little sheer joy and my small wonder where small wonder won't apply to everyone. Small wonder, I'm only five feet tall and I like trying to live 
up to being a bigger person than my actual height stature. Do you have any questions for me, Megan? Oh, I was just about to break in because I love all the rich colors you get. And I was going to ask, I, I love the yeah, thank you. It can be in folk art and Persian miniatures, Moroccan rugs, all those jewel tones, like not bright, but not primary colors. It's, it's and again, cross-cultural as well. It, why question that came in is, how do you get such tiny details in that work? Like the brushwork on that beautiful little nest. Well, the first way is by not looking cute because <laughs> as time has gone on, not only have the glasses gotten bigger, but here I'll, I will model for you. We've got this look going on with oh, the yeah. magnifying lens. <laughs> so, hey, you can walk in, I, you know, rock the, the cocktail hat and the magnifying glasses. <laughs> and another way is by really, really good brushes. And people are often surprised that my brushes aren't smaller than they are. I'm hoping you can get a look here. So this brush, if I put it in water, comes to a great point. And if I hit it against my hand in the art supply store, that's the proof of the point. And that's better than a little thin brush, which would fray. Oh, I love, I, well, I love all the, I like technical de details. <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, one other question. What, can colors be changed from how you're showing them? Can you customize? Yeah. Oh, I actually, well, hang on, hang on to my hat, literally. <laughs> <laughs> the hat no, is an excellent, excellent project. You wear it well. I'm working um, for Valentine's Day on revamping a couple of pieces. So it's a really good example of the hand painting. I've been doing, I have this really cute one from the bottom of my heart. And this was the original, but this is what I did yesterday to it. And so I've kind of like up the green and gave it a glow. And another good example that I'm playing with for Valentine's Day is my key to my heart. This is the original colors and these Ooh. are the new colors. And I haven't even put either of those up on the website yet, but I'm hoping tomorrow. And this piece, I don't have the original show you, but it was pink and like, I don't know. This is like kind Ooh. of maleficent and blood, yeah. dark, and I. It's a little I, stronger. I like this matches with a lot of your themes, but I think that with the pomegranates and those that deeper red heart, yeah. that feels like your Frida heart a little bit, all mixed together. That would be a or beautiful. I also uh, just got to show because it's one of my favorites, and people either love this one or hate it. It's one of my favorites in the collection. This is an anatomical heart with the Hebrew word for love underneath it. And oh. I don't know, in my house, I'd rather hang this than, you know, that. <laughs> I, well, I love it. Thank you, Carla, for sharing. We'll come back Thanks, to more. Megan. I'm sure we didn't get to all the questions. But I'm wearing my Megan. I'm wearing my NPR. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love, thank you so much. I'm blushing. Okay, we're on to our next artist. Our next artist is Shana Croys. Hi, Shana. Welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here with you all. Um, I'm going to just jump right in and tell you a little bit about myself and then take, hopefully take you on a tour around my gallery. So I've been doing jewelry for over 30 years. I studied at Parsons School of Design. Um, I came into jewelry slightly backwards because I really wanted to be a sculptor. And I was told by my practical dad that I had to do something more practical. And so I found, uh, I didn't know that jewelry could be so interesting and uh, so fantastic. I found it, I fell in love with it. I've never stopped. I'm completely in love with uh, everything about being in the studio, just as I was when I very first started. Um, and I have been working for the past uh, 30 years. I, I do a lot of teaching um, and I've been doing the craft shows for about the last 10 years. But what's really interesting and uh, important to me about my work is that I, um, I'm, I'm creating sculptural pieces that there's a lot of water references and I do a lot of, um, you know, I look at a lot of sea creatures and that sort of, um, and, and I swim, you know, most every day. So there's, you'll see a lot of that underwater feel when you go through my work, but the work is also really sensuous and I really believe in creating pieces that are made for the body and for the woman to, to, um, to flatter us and you know I, I've never seen someone put on a piece of my work and it just doesn't you know it just it brings out the sensuality and the beauty and the inner strength um, and uh, and and that's my goal I, I really um, believe it's important for all of us to go out in the world feeling fantastic about ourselves and, um, and I think that 
jewelry is a big way to express yourself beyond. Um, so one of the big questions that people ask me is they see my work and they see that it's large and it's got a lot of volume and they feel a little bit slightly intimidated because possibly it could be too heavy or uncomfortable. But as much as I want to look really amazing and beautiful, I want to be really comfortable. And so my work is very lightweight and super easy to wear. Um, and even though the pieces are quite um, quite bold and, and dramatic, they're, they're comfortable and lightweight. I'm going to start just with my earrings because this is my signature piece that I have been known for since I started doing the craft shows and I don't, I can't. Everybody that buys Shannon Croy's work has a pair of double-sided earrings and um, they love having them and owning them because not only are they really comfortable, but they're interesting, um, super easy to wear uh, and you can go for really large bold pieces and there's no weight, but I'm gonna quickly show you. So it's just a two part earring back and front, um, a lot of them are reversible and look good in either direction. You just put it on and no fumbling with a small back. They actually are easier to wear than a regular earring. So that's my big uh, claim in terms of my earrings, though I make lots of different styles and I will be showing you them. So if it's okay, I'm gonna take you on a little tour. It's gonna take me one second to turn my camera around. There we go. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start here. This is actually, uh, this case here is um, actually one of the only cases that doesn't have work that is um, enameled or powder coated. This is all straight oxidized silver, 18 karat vermeil, um, sterling silver. And then the rings are um, solid 18 karat and sterling silver. So there's a big range in materials. Um, as well as price points in my work. A large uh, portion of my work, especially now, is uh, includes color. So I'm doing a lot of, this is actually powder coating, although it reads and feels like enamel. And that is what I, I am an enamelist. And I've just recently made this transition because powder coating is a new uh, material that is um, much lighter in weight, uh, easier uh, to work with. And most importantly for you guys, it's very durable and strong. Um, so I'm able to get these rich, lush gold surfaces. And I know I have a lot of work. So I really hope you all go to my website and look at the pieces individually because um, I work day and night. <laughs> it's my favorite place to be is the studio. And here we go into my green palette. And just to give you an example, this necklace is powder coated the green on that. And that one is enamel. So they're really, you know, they, they're, they're different, but they're not so different that, um, that I, I don't feel like I took a loss in doing this, but now I'm able to make uh, most of my work in color where so many people, you know, because the enamel was so time consuming and hard, many people just, it was, it got priced out. So now I feel really great about work that is really accessible to everyone. Again, lots of my double-sided earrings. Um, I know, like, can we, actually, can we, could we try some things on a little bit? Like, yeah, of course. Try some more, I wanna try, okay. I wanna see more, uh, like one more ring and maybe a bigger necklace and then another uh, pair of Is that big enough for you? Yes. Can you try it on or um, no? Yes, I can try this one on, of course. Yeah. Oh, of course I just made there. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to switch my camera and we'll do some try on. I think, I mean, I would love to see, and I want, I know the rings. I love this. This has been, a, it sounds like a bigger change for you to move to a new medium in a way and learn a new skill with the powder coating. You know, it was really very, it was very easy, quick move for, I mean, uh, quick move for me because powder coating is actually very similar to enamel. It's just a lower, uh, it's just a lower temperature. So it, it's everything that enamel does, but everything about it's easier. <laughs> so I've been having the time of my life. Yes. Um, I've been having the time of my life doing uh, the powder coating and I'm just so excited with all the color, but wait for it. Yes, that's even the back. back. That's the back. So this is actually... 
Uh, this is a piece that came out um, from COVID. So I'm really actually excited. I'm super thrilled that you asked me to see that. And you wanted to see, did you want to see one of the cross finger ring? I have so yeah. many rings. Maybe and a colorful all... one. Cause you're, I love what you're wearing which is more the neutral tones but maybe a colorful yeah. one. And so tell people a little bit about powder coating. It's, it's not so, glass like enamel. It's, so powder coating is car paint. It is industrial paint. Basic, oh, it's, is it a powder that gets baked in an oven at 400 degrees versus enamel, which bakes at 1500 degrees? Um, so the me medium feels very similar. The thing about it, you know, I, I sift it on in the same mm -hmm. way I do enamel. I'm, I'm gilding gold onto it. I'm so I'm fusing gold into the surface the same way I do gold leafing with enamel. It's just that the, the melting point is lower. So the material itself is much more durable because it has a little poly, it has a little. Um, a little plastic in it. Um, so oh, I love. It. Okay, we, we are gonna have to come back, but it does just tell people it is super lightweight for because it's, it's all over super time. lightweight. It cool. is super lightweight. It feels and looks like glass, but it's super dark, durable, and very light. My work is Ooh. extremely lightweight. I know I, I have a few clients on there. You can definitely type in the chat how light my earrings are. Yeah, and we're we will come back and try on more things, but for for time's sake, we're gonna move on to the next artist. But stay tuned, everybody. We're going to play. Thank play. you. Nina, welcome from Nature vs. Future. <laughs> Thank you, our party, and all of you for joining. I'm Nina Valenti, the designer and founder of Nature vs. Future. Um, I grew up in New York. I'm a first generation New Yorker. My parents are immigrants from Sicily and Argentina. And this led me to a sort of dual life childhood of growing up as a Brooklyn city kid and also spending my summers by the sea in a, in a farm in Sicily, which is super cool, not only because I can speak more than one language, but because I have this major appreciation for nature um, as well as the modern city life. Um, and it's also been very influential um, for me in, um, in, in my life and, and also um, in translating into my work. Um, I've always had a passion for art and fashion and creating. Uh, I went to Parsons and after I graduated a few years later, I wanted to start my own brand. I had my own vision for what I, how I wanted clothing to look for women, um, things that really complemented shape. Um, I wanted to, being a New Yorker, I wanted to produce everything locally in New York City. And I just had um, my own vision that I, I really wanted to show. Um, which I think the best thing to do is just kind of show you my work. <laughs> um, I have a lot of really cool shapes. I'm inspired by architecture and line. Um, this is my swerve coat. It's one of my signature pieces. It's kind of flat on a hanger, but when you put it on, it has like amazing shape. Um, I can show you, let me just try one on for you. So um, in the charcoal, you can see that I'll do like these really cool pop color linings. So not only does it look special from the outside, but also on the inside. Um, another thing that I believe is that um, as far as for my, my clothing pieces, is like, I consider them more like collectible pieces that last forever um, as long as you take care of them. So I want them to be styles that are not trendy, that are just kind of unique on their own and you can wear them for years to come. So I use a lot of really high quality, high-end designer overstock fabrics um, and I also um, sorry and I also have been sourcing like a lot of high-end menswear fabrics because they're actually made better quality and to last longer than women's wear fabrics. Um, I wish you can kind of feel these fabrics but they're amazing like this is a wool cashmere blend. Um, I also do details that are quite functional besides cool for design like I do these um, French cuffs, so you can flip them up or down if you have like a shorter arm length. Um, everything is pretty well tailored. Um, I also do different variations of pieces. For instance, this is my double collar sweater jacket that has been in my collection for many years. And um, besides these beautiful wool jerseys, um, like how I'll do them in these really nice fun pop colors. I always um, will do them as well in like fleece pieces so that you can wear them. Um, if you're allergic to wool, you actually can use them as fleece. And also fleece is nice because you can machine wash it, um, but they're made to look more like a designer fleece. So you can wear them out and still look 
kind of put together rather than like wearing just like like a oversized fleece and everything is pretty tailored front and back um but i also i also do some shapes that aren't as fitted but always have nice structures so that just so that they complement your shape um a lot Which of I have a question, Nina. Is the yeah. sizing adjustable then? Is there, is, how does the oh. size work then? Well, yeah. So my actual sizing is extra small through extra large. But the awesome thing about things that are asymmetrical is that you can actually just shift button placements over and it doesn't really affect the design. It just makes it more tailored to yourself without actually having to go in and bring it to get it custom tailored. Um, but then I also have pieces, for instance, like my raincoat wrap jacket. This one here, which is a little less structured, um, or a little, let's say, it's still structured, but less, let's say, um, fitted. It's less fitted, um, but it still has good structure. And okay. this has, and I, I like these really cool details because um, they make them functional for different things. Like I, in this one, I have a raglan sleeve, so you can wear something thicker under. So it kind of has more longevity as far as seasons. Um, I do this cool detail where it's a full zip hood, but then you can also unzip it and put it over your head and then just kind of cover your neck. So it also becomes a windbreaker. And this is great for travel. Um, and what, I, what else I like about this style is that, again, it's another piece that is cool from the front and the back. And it also looks good when you just kind of have it open and just like very relaxed it because it still has cool dynamic shape in it. Um, another piece that I kind of obsessively have been wearing now is like all the organic sweatshirt pieces, um, just because they're super yes. comfortable. But These again, are like indoor and outdoor pieces. Exactly. Think, right? Yeah, okay. season yeah. and where you live. You know, like on the in the West Coast, what I'm wearing could be like an outerwear jacket. Here, it's like a layering piece, but then in the spring, it's your outerwear jacket. So that's why I like pieces that are not trendy. Like they just kind of last and you can wear them as staples. And that's why also like in my collection, it's not like every season I produce all these new styles. I have a lot of classics and then I have a percentage of, of new pieces because they're things that are never go out of style and people will come back and want something that I made before like for instance, my double collar sweater jacket, but then they want it in the new version, which is a vest. And I'll show you that next. Yeah, I want to see, I'm like, do you have new, some new things? That yes, you're I will show you. So this is my organic um, fleece sweater jacket, which is super comfy for like, and keeps you warm. Let's say if you're doing outdoor dining and then you can also get cozy in it this way. <laughs> um, well, and I'll show you, yeah, the vest style is really cool. You know, and any red coat, you're, you're teasing us with that red. Oh yeah, what's it? Well, here I'll show you one of the red vests. Ooh, it's a red. Oh, hit both. Yeah, so so it actually comes in the jacket, a vest, and then the coat. But just to show you, so again, you can just kind of throw it on. It has a cool dynamic shape like this, um, and then you can also button it and have it really nice and tailored. What's cool about this too is that um, for like Zoom meetings and things like that, it's cool to have like a nice statement top, but still be comfortable at home. So you can kind of be on camera and look nice and sharp, but still be really comfortable and wear sweatpants on the bottom. Um, yeah, the, the, the very put together look. Exactly. Yes. But with, without it being too much on you. Mm -hmm. This is actually the red in the wool cashmere of the classic swerve coat. Um, I also do like other styles, which I, I don't want to take too much time, but like I do also do dresses. I know right now we're in a less of a dress period, but I do like, this is a really cool like tunic dress which is a great comfortable piece that you can wear almost like a top. I would and, say, and at home with pajamas and look quite chic. <laughs> exactly. Or just to show you, it's like just a really cool neckline, but it's super comfortable. It's just like a ponty knit, which is really comfortable. And then I do like heavier weight pieces all the way to like thin slit coats, which are super warm. Um, and this is like a maxi length. So it's really long. It keeps you really, um, just warm in the storms when we have storms and cold weather. Um, mm -hmm. But I also have lighter weight. Um, and can people coat. make an appointment at your studio if they want to, if they have more questions? Yeah, you definitely. Appointments? Mm -hmm. So my studio is in Dumbo, Brooklyn, and I take appointments. Um, and it's pretty much just like one or two people I mean, it's from the same party, let's say. 
And uh, with masks, you can come try anything on. I have all my sizing here. And I, what's also really cool is I have um, one of a kind pieces at the studio, which I don't um, have on the website. So there's like a lot of cool stuff in here. Ooh, um, okay. So maybe in person or a Zoom appointment is, are in some people's futures. Exactly. Okay, also do Zoom appointments, yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, okay, this is the new wave. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll make sure we circle back because we're gonna, I'm sure have some questions. We're gonna stop, move on to our next artist, Sue from Suchi Pottery. Hi, everybody. Yes, hi, Sue. Hey, welcome to Vermont. I hope we have good signal the whole way through this meeting. And um, my name is Sue Shannon, and I'm up here in Pittsburgh, Central Vermont. And I make the pottery that you see here. Um, I've been making pottery for about 30 plus years. And over that time, um, there was a great uh, melding period of teenage boys moving through my kitchen and wonderful customers that we'd engage in these great conversations. And uh, we would um, just exchange different stories and um, I could take home some of their ideas uh, from shows and, um, and then test drive them with my teenage boys. <laughs> And, um, you know, come, I, I ended up starting with a small line of dinnerware. And over the last five years, um, the dinnerware line has grown into like three size plates. I have three different size bowls down here too. Um, and over here also three different size um, cups. And so I've been doing this particular product line for about 10 years total. And um, over the course of that 30 years, I've just um, always felt that wonderful, um, that wonderful feeling on the wheel where you just get to zen out and, and hone right in and listen to the clay and feel my way through making each piece. I make everything one at a time on the potter's wheel. Everything gets hand painted. So, so things are usually pretty chillax here in the studio. And um, let me show you a few of the other things I do besides dinnerware. And um, I, I mentioned going to uh, shows and getting great ideas from people um, cooking in their kitchen and places they've traveled to around the world and things. Um, this is a very simple little, let's see if I can do it without, there we go. You can see the texture and patterning there. This is a grater. It's very simple. Um, it goes with the olive oil cruet and this cruet is about eight ounces. But the, the great thing about this grater is you can take some garlic, buzz it around, take the papers off first, buzz it around, and it totally melts into this little garlic infuser. You pour in the oil and then you use your bread and you have a really delicious little appetizer. So um, as this rolled out into the world in my booth, um, I'd have people come by and say, oh, I love, okay, so here's what you gotta do next time. And put in dry herbs, or I like to put in the fresh parsley, and then I do the Parmesan. And, and so we'd go off on these things. Um, in addition to um, appetizers, I make really wonderful little, I call them party boats. Nice little appetizer. Uh, it's about mm, 11 inches long. And I also have one of my crowd favorites are these little ramekins. Well, I call them ramekins or tiny bowls. Can you see the spiral inside? The little gift wrapped. Um, they go really well with the cruet. So these are some of the things in addition to the dinnerware that I make. And um, Megan. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I have never seen those little bowls. I know. They're adorable. They're the ultra, ultra, ultra. Everybody loves little balls, right? Everybody loves with little balls. Yes. <laughs> everybody loves little balls. So they come in ten different colors. Oh. So I mean, as you can see, the the real zhuzh, I guess, um, of the, the pottery that I make is that you can mix and match and play in the rainbow. So everybody loves to come in and grab a whole, a whole bunch of bowls and different colors. These are all yellow, but they're great. I mean, 
jewelry fits just that's, fine. It, yeah. I, mean, I know that's exactly what I, I have little bowls oh. of jewelry everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, salt and sauces and jewelries and herbs and candles and tea bags and everything. So everybody knows what to do with a little bowl and we've all got our favorite little ways. To you use have them. little and you have them in packs like that on your website those are so i do cool. have them in packs on the website my little four bowl bundle yeah and i got get that garlic okay i'm going to ask you about the cutest tur butter dish oh. uh, tagine dish behind you because i love yes. that and i think that is such a nice it relates so well to that garlic the garlic it, is new for me too how nice and functional yeah, so um, this little cutie is has got a great, great big knob on it to you can always, I mean, you know, sometimes we're in the kitchen and we're just not being delicate, we're just being real life. And so I make sure that I always have a really big knob on there so you don't have to think very hard and lift up to anything delicate. And so this is great for cheeses and butter. Um, and also for, you know, it, even little leftovers, you know, you might have a little cornbread leftover at the end of the night and you can just stick it in there and leave it on your counter. Ooh. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's nice to have something like for later to nibble on. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like I mentioned at the three thirty meeting, mine has chocolate chip cookies in them. <laughs> so, um, but one thing I feel like I forget to say, obviously I make useful, useful things. Mm -hmm. They are all totally dishwasher safe totally um, microwave safe, um, things you can also heat up in the oven. I mean, I'm all about the ultra practical and, and keeping things simple and usable and um, everything really has lots of different uses. You know, the, the utensil jars that I have up there, the small one, people, you know, can use as a, a, a wine chiller. Um, so, and then you have, can you so, show some mugs that might go well with that wine? and if you have okay so you can use hot liquids and cold liquids in them oh yes okay the tumbler i've been yeah. using the tumbler these um hold about 12 ounces and so they're really great especially in winter my studio is cold or maybe you have a cold house whatever in the in this time of year they're great for tea and um they're so warming and it feels so good and for some reason i just it's, it's a really nice, easy, grippable size, as you can see, and, but I'm a kind of a small person. So, but anyway, it's, uh, I'm always paying attention to all the details, the, the rims, uh, the rims are smooth to the lip, the bottoms are not rough. These are all the fun little details you get to think of when you're actually making something as simple as a cup and a bowl. There's a gazillion little wonderful details to, to figure out. And so that's why I've been figuring it out for 30 years. I'm still interested and I'm still learning. So. Do you have anything new that you've been working on? Any new designs that you're excited about or some favorites? Um, some of my favorites that I'll be making a whole bunch more of are my one liter pitchers. My one liter pitchers actually go out for flower vases as much as they mm. go out for, um, for water on the table. Wine, of course. Um, and sometimes actually some people see it and think spaghetti sauce. I really have had that and that that's okay. It's a um, lot of spaghetti sauce. That's a lot of spaghetti <laughs> sauce. But you know, if somebody wants it and they, they can do whatever they want with it. But um, they're really gorgeous with flowers. But I'll show you a little detail. There it is. Yes. It's sweet little How detail. How nice is that matches the graphic so well. It does, it does. First, I just wanted to um, figure out how my very first pottery teacher in West Virginia um, made this beautiful little handle and eventually um, the as this product line the design evolved um, I didn't really do it on purpose <laughs> the two just happened to go together and um, it was it's just a wonderful thing your brain made it work for you you know yeah. I, I like it well, we're gonna have to come back and see some more because I know there I see a huge cookie jar that's really cute okay we'll be back Sue okay. thank you so much thanks everybody uh, yeah. And we'll be on to our next artist. Uh, we have Arza. Arza, welcome. Hi, guys. Everyone can hear, right? Perfect. Perfect. So uh, hi, everyone, to people who know me or don't know me. My name is Arza. I'm the designer, owner of Arza Design Handbags. I uh, design, I would say, and produce all my uh, bags here in the city. Um, originally, I'm not from here. I'm far, far away. I came all the way from Israel. Um, I arrived here in 2099 to see the end 
of the turn of the center and I stayed a little longer, just a little longer. Um, when I arrived here, um, I start working, my, my background is textile. I, uh, I graduate uh, in Israel as a textile designer, as a printer, and I started working at some fashion companies here, one of them Tahari, some of you probably have heard. And I decided back then that if to be working for someone or other words, slaving for someone else, why don't I do it for myself? And then uh, I was kind of living a uh, double life. Over lunch break, I would run to my guy, he was midtown and I would make with him a design and we went back and we did some production and I came back after lunch and went back to my regular desk design job. And until I uh, figure out I was uh, ready to leave the cooperation industry and uh, start my own way. Um, actually, at that time, I was actually also doing a weekend market. That's when my markets life started, craft markets and design markets. I was doing the young designers market in New York. Some of you probably have been there or know about it. And so I was kind of living a double life, but I uh, remember um, how it all started, how I designed my first handbag. Um, and actually, I decided I'm going to wear one, an old one now. I can show you like the, the new one behind in a second. But just to show you, that's mine. And uh, that's been with me, I would say, close to 10 years now. And um, this old design started when I was sitting in my uh, kitchen table. And I was wondering about, I don't know why, but I was thinking about clutches and how much I love clutches, but how much I hate clutches and all this like, what do I do with a clutch? Like, how do I hold the clutch? And I put it on a restaurant table, I turn around, there is no bag. So I said, what if I just cut a hole in the center? And the first sample came out a disaster. It was just two pieces of leather that I hand stitched with like a thick needle. And, but I said to myself, there is something there. So from there, I, uh, based, I based, basically, I saw that and I started my production and I start small production and selling the bag. And I saw that not only me, like some other people thought it can be a, a great idea just to hang like a jewelry over your hand. And you know, you don't have to be bothered with the bag, it's just there. So that was the beginning, beginning, beginning of RZ design. And um, my, my, my concept from that on is um, basically solving a solution to a problem. So not that every bag has a problem, but I try to design from a need. I just don't do bags just to do bags. I tell my customer, if I just do a bag, then it will be like any other bag. Like, so I want to, to bring something new to the table, something that will help people that will have a little bit more to the design, but still um, my philosophy is uh, clean, sharp line, very uh, clean design, very minimal, uh, very classic. It's, and um, uh, it, I was listening to what Nina was saying and me and Nina go a long way together and we, we share a lot of the same customers, a lot of the aesthetic and the fact that she said about using a, a clean line and a design that can last forever and people that will come for her for her quotes, the same works here. Like I have customer that will follow me for 15, 20 years. They can show me the first bag that they own. They own seven, 10 other bags. And it's, it's a nice, it's a nice feeling that you could help and make someone happy. So in, uh, no. maybe I could stop and just show you some stuff. Yes, I, I want to see things. Okay, we'll show, show you us some. beautiful things. All oh. everything as beautiful. Okay, uh, so the clutches, um, many of you know, it's like the basic, the basic design. I'm not uh, going to say so. I forgot to mention that uh, just to make life a little more complicated, I do them in different leathers and different lining and different piping. Um, so some of them uh, will be a suede skin, some of them will be an embossed, uh, some will be a solid soft, some will be a distress, some will be a little metallic. So you can see like there, there will be, a, not every bag will be the same, even though it's the same uh, style. Also weight wise, I was talking about it in the party earlier, like the same bag can be on the larger scale, of course, behind me, it can be a half a pound difference. Um, and sometimes it really makes a difference. Some, some people like it a little lighter on their shoulders. Some people like it uh, um, a little like sturdy. So it depends on the person, on the day, on the color and whatever, but I'll, I'll try to run quick because I know we're running out of, uh, out of 
So we, we talked a little bit about the, the clutches. Uh, basically, I, I said it, uh, they all have like uh, different lining inside. I was a textile designer and I did a lot of prints. So um, people will find different surprises for the bag. But as far as uh, what I was saying, that form follow function. And um, um, so a bag like that, that starts as a small crossbody bag, have a zipper on the back, can open to be a bigger silhouette surprise. And then you can snap it on top and get like a bigger silhouette. We call it the triangle box. Can be carried oh. as a crossbody, as a shoulder, as a, um, the strap itself, because I'm short, but not all universe is short like me, uh, can be adjustable. So you can just pull it inside, make a new knot, stop wherever you want, and here you go. Like basically you put all the leftover inside and then, um, just release it if you need it a little longer, a little shorter. So as I said before, my best kind of work in a different uh, silhouette, uh, just to make sense that basically to, to have customer enjoy the benefit of uh, being able to maneuver be between uh, size. This is actually one of the ones that people tell me, what does this one do? Like okay. does it dance or whatever. This is one, um, we call it the five pocket. It's not the smartest name, it has five. <laughs> Um, I do like it because it has a great proportion. Uh, the strap I did is an adjustable. There is a great extra pocket, the six pocket that is in between. And uh, this one, uh, for example, is uh, embossed printed suede. So uh, it has like this shine over the suede, really, really lightweight. Um, uh, the, same, the same guy will be here just to show you. I'm, I'm showing today a glitz, I guess, for the new year. I feel I can party a little bit. Things are changing, you know? Um, like another one that is pretty is the suede. It is the distressed suede. I hope you oh, can I see. love that. And I know we just had a question. Yes. You have, because I we have so many different styles, but that big red one in the back. That this, is, yes. I, or I have, so I have that in the red. I have this in the, you wanted to see that, right? Yeah, let's see that. Someone asked about that one. Okay, okay. all the reds. Is red, just while you're showing us, is red like a classic color for you? I red. feel like you do it, you have a very strong presence with red in all your bags. I tried to take it off and I saw that why, why, why fight it? Because people yeah. are going to it all the time, especially husbands <laughs> for buying gifts. It's something Cute. else red, right? Uh, yeah, so this one is great. Uh, has a hidden zipper, fold over. Again, the crossbody can be really crossbody as a big silhouette. Uh, you can wear it also from the handle. There is a single handle. You can tuck the handle in. You heard the, the two mm -hmm. of them, they're very strong. You can detach the strap or you can decide, people who have it probably in the audience can say yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can move it uh, up to a higher silhouette and wear it when your uh, computer, I, I like to wear it with the stripe out and the zipper pocket close to my body. Uh, but people wear it as a silhouette like that, and it's a great computer bag, uh, everyday bag, a work bag. And when you finish, you know, work, whenever, whatever that word means to anyone <laughs> who wants to work, right? Uh, and you want to go out and have a drink with your friends. Again, a sentence that sounds bizarre right now. You can uh, use it as a clutch as well. I um, love that. So, that so, so they all kind of work in a... Yeah in different silhouette, but I wanted to say also that I, during this period, uh, this tough period that we all having, I did do a few Zoom uh, meeting with customers and I'm open to this Zoom meeting where I talk to customers, I show them and I, I happen to send a few uh, bags to different customers and they can see it and feel it when they get it at home and then whatever whatever they don't like they send back so cool. it was working in that kind of uh, oh i love that kind of like a little you get your own special curated shopping yeah. experience of from arza Ooh. okay we will be back because we have more questions but we're going to move on to our next and last artist sam stone swan and stone millinery yes hi everyone hi. um so sorry, that was awesome. I love those bags so much. <laughs> um, so I am Sam Stone and I am half of an awesome hat making duo up here in Vermont, um, like Sue, I'm up in Vermont. Um, and uh, Nora Swan, who's my partner is actually working a little behind the scenes, making sure everything goes smoothly tonight. Um, and when Nora and I first came together to make hats together, um, we started making hats together about 10 years ago. We were friends for, for, for a few years before 
it occurred to us to do that. Um, but we came together because we wanted to make exquisite, timeless pieces um, that I think we're hearing this from pretty much everyone tonight um, that we, you know, in our case, we were coming to back to Vermont after living in New York City for many years in, in different ways, but sort of coming from a situation where everything's at your fingertips. I mean, you can find great throwaway stuff um, on the street in New York better than you can find at sort of high-end vintage stores here, quite honestly. But, um, and then coming to Vermont where there's really a sense of where everything is coming from. And um, there's a, you know, there's really a sense of, um, sustainability in the things that we use every day. Um, listening to Sue talk about her pottery, I felt like, you know, this was, this is so true to Vermont, some of the things that you're talking about, Sue. Um, but anyway, so that was very important to us when we first started making hats. And, and in fact, all of our hats initially came from, we, we were making them from the wool from our sheep. So um, one of the things, however, that we didn't quite anticipate the strength that it, that it, that it was true was when we started going to shows and seeing the impact that we were having on women and men who were putting our hats on for the first time. And I just wanna show you, um, you know, a few differences in what the difference a hat can make. So um, we would be in our booth and particularly um, people who had never put, you know, who, who really weren't used to wearing hats. And we would hear some of the strangest noises sometimes from women who put a hat on and Ooh! or or they'd have girlfriends around them and you know start coming and you know saying you have you have to have the hat you have to have the hat when they've never worn the hat before and initially a lot of um the questions we were faced with that we didn't really know how to approach them were like oh but how could i pull this off um how will i ever get away with it uh where can i where could i possibly wear this hat and so um Initially, we were kind of thinking about, oh, well, there are different situations, you know, garden parties, um, benefits, you know, cocktail parties. And um, the longer we were doing this, though, we were, the more we were realizing, no, you wear your hat wherever you goddamn well please. Once you have a hat on and you realize what it does for you and what you are doing for the hat and what a great pair you are, then it just all starts to make a lot of sense. And so, like I was saying at um, the earlier party, you know, if I wear this to the grocery store and I just decide to own it, well, now I'm just at the grocery store, but I look awesome. So what is wrong with that? So we just sort of realized that um, sustainability is important in our fat in in our in our work. And um, as Nina was talking about these timeless collectible pieces, these heirloom pieces that you're going to hand down to your children. But also it sort of became our mission to, um, to support everyone's right and, and pursuit of unapologetic expression. And that is, um, that is so core to what we do now. And I just want to show, I want to keep putting on a few more hats you know, even if we're just in a Zoom meeting, like we've talked a lot about, right? I mean, I'm just wearing something that I can, I can do yoga in, but I put on a different hat and, and my NPR earrings, of course, and I am a badass. And, you know, I'm going to say that unapologetically because I think the hat really like, it brings out a different facet of your personality every single time. So perhaps you know, you're lounging around having a cup of tea out of Sue's tumbler and you want this nice cozy squishable hat that quite honestly I could even sit on this hat. I mean, hopefully, you know, mm. that mistake doesn't happen too often, but it does. Um, and this is a hat where we make the felts ourselves. It's a soft squishable hat, super warm and cozy. But, you know, we can, again, I'm just going to show you now this is a, our Lorelei. It has a little elastic that you can hold behind. And um, we often put the feathers in the back, but um, again, you know, quite a different personality. I love that. That is yeah. so pretty on you. I, you. I was gonna say the names, do you have, is the Lorelei reference anything or is it a time, a name? You know, we, um, we started giving um, names to our hats that often are quite random, sometimes are slightly descriptive. This one being beside the point. <laughs> beautiful and then also 
This one we call the Vivian, but it's a take on our original Rosalind Russell with this swoopy brim. Um, it has a different crown than our Rosalind Russell, but um, so we, you know, we do have different names for the shape. So then the trims and the colors vary. Um, the other thing I wanted to just point out is that we sew in, and uh, never mind, you can't see it, but we sew in a band where we can add um, a drawstring so that our hats, you know, are adjustable. A lot of our soft hats will have, you know, sort of a, like this one, this is the kepi, this is the hat that I wear like everywhere. Um, has a belt that you can tighten so that it's, you know, stays on your head. Nice. Um, and someone had asked about rain hats. I'm not sure you have any there. Oh, I, um, I do um, because this is my studio. I don't have any right here, but I, so I'll just grab a couple. Um, this all, you have all the seasons covered, which is amazing. And each one, even though you have different names with the trims and colors, you're able to personalize so much. Sure. I mean, we do a lot of custom work right now. Of course, that ends up being um, on Zoom and FaceTime because we're not going to shows. We are up here in Vermont. So while Nina can say a couple of people can come into their studio, not, not a lot of people are coming to Vermont right now. And actually, I guess you probably shouldn't. But yes, we have. So um, this is uh, the Soigné, where again, of course, we have a lot of asymmetry in our hats. Um, the point comes up. Um, and then we have um, a somewhat classic fedora, but again, with a point on the side. So these are all um, a waterproof canvas. It's actually sailcloth. So it has a real body to it too. So you can bend the um, fabric and it kind of holds its shape. So this is a, a fedora with a point on the side and we do them in all different colors. These are on the website too. And this has a drawstring. So they're all, you know, you can tighten them. But also, you know, you tend to wear a rain hat when it's a little blustery and cold and maybe you're carrying bags and maybe an umbrella or whatever. So you can tighten the... Oh, that's the, nice. I love all these options for different hair dues and head sizes. Awesome. Right. Hair yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand. Well, uh, in our case, you know, Nora and I um, have very different hair, very different face shapes. We have different coloring. So we get to cover kind of a lot just in the studio when we're sort of looking at what looks good and sort of how to adjust this and that and, you know. Oh, that's fun. Oh, I, yeah. It's very, it sounds like a very collaborative process. Very. We are gonna come back for more. Yep. We are out of time. So everybody, like I know we, we scratch the surface tonight, but we have time for our after party. So we are, we're wrapped up for today. We're going to go right on into our raffle and give out our gift gift codes. But before we go there, I just want to say thank you again for being here. It is really a pleasure. And you are the reason we do our work and sharing this with you um, and sharing with you on social media. Everybody has Instagram, Facebook pages. All of that is um, really important to us. And we appreciate you. Thank you. And happy new year. Happy 2021. And we're here for you. We're looking forward to more parties starting again Saturday. So uh, without further ado, we are ready to celebrate our $50 gift certificate winners. If you would like to unmute yourself, that would be awesome so we can cheers together. And while we're, I'm naming out these winners, please use the chat if you're a winner, put your email in the chat so we we can get that, all the codes to you. So make sure you put your email in the chat or DM the admin directly. Okay, we're gonna get started. Our first winner for Carla Goody and Art Design is Lynn Montenegro. Lynn Montenegro, you are a winner. Woo! Thank you. Yes, cheers. I'm excited. <laughs> Lynn, don't forget to put your email in the chat. Okay. Yes, please, please, please. please. And for our second winner for Shana Croy's jewelry, we have the winner, Daryl Bella. Yeah. Daryl, you're a winner. Congratulations. Oh, hey. And our third winner for Nature versus, Nature versus Future is Barbara Chu. Barbara Chu, you're a winner. Thank you so much for being uh -huh. here, you guys. Oh, awesome. Our, Fourth winner for Suchi Pottery. Fourth winner is Ellen Schoenfeld. Schoenfeld? 
I'm oh. sure I said that wrong. Oh my God. Hi, Ellen, you are you. a winner. Yes, you guys. Oh my God. It's like the holidays all over again. Okay. <laughs> so our fifth winner for Arza Design is Barbara Antwerp. Barbara Antwerp, you are a winner. <laughs> Barbara. Please feel, please put your email in the chat. We want to make sure we get all these codes to you. Our sixth and final winner, but we do have a prize for all. Our sixth winner for a $50 gift certificate for Swan and Stone Millinery is Betsy Cat. Catcher, catcher, catch, catcher. Yay! Yes. Oh, beautiful, you. beautiful modeling a gorgeous necklace. Shana. Uh -huh. Shana. Well, we are definitely gonna Shana. have some time for this show and tell. Do not worry, we're we're Shana. getting there. We're almost there. We're almost there for that after party. Okay. Before we let you go, I want to give you guys a little bit more information. I want to say thank you guys so much again. I want we to do appreciate all of you. If you were not a fifty dollars gift certificate gift certificate winner, you are receiving a, ten, a discount code to all of, of the artist websites, as well as the hosts and co-hosts, just for being here tonight, because we appreciate you so much. The coupon code for today's part is A-R-T-P-A-R-T-Y-114. We will email this to you. You don't need to write it down, but if you would like to get shopping like right now, again, that coupon code is A-R-T-P-A-R-T-Y-114. And we're gonna put that in the chat right there. We are we just want to say thank you again. We have another party coming up on Saturday. Please feel free to RSVP again through our website, and uh, that we're gonna be featuring Ecologic, Bottega, Flaviana, some more haircuts, Christine Evans, Gina Panorfi, Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry, Bebop and Wally, and me, Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry. So it's gonna be a really nice, uh, a really nice, beautiful day of art. We can't wait to host you. You can RSVP at artpartycentral.org. And I want to say thank you again to Nora Swan, my co-host. She's admin in the chat. If you have questions or had anything happen, she's been helping out and been behind the scenes throughout this. Um, we're gonna have the, we're gonna open up everything right now. Video, un unmute, everything for, for our after party. You are not obligated to stay. Feel free to leave as you wish. We're gonna have maybe 20 to 30 more minutes to try on some stuff and get more questions answered. So who has, who would like to see some more beautiful things? <laughs> if not, I will start. <clears throat> Thank you, you guys. I know we didn't answer every question and we didn't see everything. Okay, I'm gonna get going with it. We're gonna start, Carla. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we didn't answer all your questions. So I was gonna maybe just make sure we hit everything. Um, and I switched hats. Just you did. Oh, yes, by the way. Okay, everybody modeling their cute outfits. Thank you. We love when you wear our work. It is so flattering. I almost left the Zoom for a second to get another one, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great metaphor for, you know, hat change. Anyways, Hi. Carla. Yes, Megan. Yes. Our well, one of the, I'm going to spotlight you. I got yeah. it. There we go. Thank you, sweetie. So one of the questions that came in is, can you make your little ones as big as one of your larger pieces? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I absolutely can. There are some themes that I do small and then repeat large. So I have a tree of life really small. I have a Hamsa small already in the little ones collection and then they come medium and large. But let's say somebody just wanted, you know, the anatomical heart and said they wanted big. They can absolutely talk to me. It's just not on the website that way. But one of my favorite things to do is to work on designing commissions that way with people that say they want to take something. And I might add a border or something I might to fill the space if I went bigger. But we can absolutely, and we take big things and make them smaller sometimes too. But usually small to big is more popular. Usually and because you have a lot of range in the little ones on. Yeah. I do. You know, there's, I don't even show all of them on the website. I went one, one, by designing the little ones, I found that very freeing. Like there are things I'll do in the little ones that I would never invest the time to do in the big ones. Like I have mating rabbits called speed mating. And somehow that just works for a small one. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we're getting um, say, if we have anybody with background noise, we could ask you to mute. Okay. I think this, actually what I think what might be going on is maybe somebody has two devices on because it's feedback. 
Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll just, just okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I want to ask, Shay we did not try on enough of Shayna's jewelry. Shayna here? There she is. I know we like touched, we like looked at one. Yes, we didn't get to try on earrings. Oh, and you're muted, honey. Sorry, sorry. I have, I'm also working with two devices. Um, well, I'm happy to try on earrings. We did see the double-sided and wow. I do them in lots of styles, but I also do so many others, my newest, most popular earring is my elongated crescent pod. Um, and this is super long, but it's also really light. Uh, and I do them all the way down to teeny tiny and all different finishes, all different colors with gold, with silver. I, cust I can do custom designs. I have Lynn on here now who um, I'm in the midst of doing a custom pair uh, in a really small version of the beaded uh, crescent. Um, do you want me to keep going or do you have another yeah. like to see something else? Definitely. I was like, I know you have some newer earrings and some new things you've you've worked, you've been developing and designing and oh, there's so much I, new work. It's great. There's, We're constantly working and there's so much new work. This is a pair of uh earrings. This is um this mm. is I, I kind of call it a sleeper because people don't always see it because they're so enamored with the double sided. It's my arabesque. And I think that this earring is so stunning on. And also I do it in all different, um, I do it in all different sizes and really, really spectacular. Um, oh my God. Okay. If you really want an amazing, this is another amazing new earring. Um, Chris, I'm Ooh, showing I you love that. It's like a swirl. And then yeah, you do use so many curves, right? In your I, Everything I do is very sensuous and curvy and feminine and, um, yeah, I'd not, you won't, it's very hard to find a flat angle. Um, and maybe it's, it's like, I maybe to show people, cause I, I love how lightweight your pieces are, even though they are so sculptural and big, your bracelets, for example, like, can you give people a sense of like the weight? They're super light. I, I don't know what to compare it to, but you, like styrofoam almost, it feels well, like, like light. Yes. Dense, light, very light. They're graphic. very light. So basically, it actually these big. These are one of a kind sculptural cups. I'm going to show you this one because it's fairly new and one of my absolute favorites. But I actually carve it out of styrofoam and then I grow a very thin layer of copper, melt out the foam, and then a layer of gold or enamel, depending on which piece you buy. Um, so this is super hollow and really light. And this probably. Um, you know, it's probably equivalent to like a cast silver bracelet. Now this is cast and solid. And so this is um, part of my, uh, you know, it's a, not the electroform, but with smaller things, I do go with cast, especially with things that are gonna get a lot of wear and tear. Uh, for instance, my, um, my rings. And I do, you know, Ooh. I don't wanna forget about my really special, amazing pieces, but um, this is, Am I showing it to the right? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Yeah, so this is actually 18 karat gold, um, yeah, green diamonds, yes, and so oxidized silver. All of my pieces are sculptural and you know all the way around. So my rings are very interesting, but yet they're really comfortable. I make everything so that it fits uh, really comfortable and close. And so if you go on my website, there there's really a nice range. And I do work. I love working in precious metals. I have less of that just because of, you know, the economy and because I work and I, and I also like the big pieces, but it's all there. Awesome. Oh, thank you. I, I love all the earrings. I do. The double sided is so cool to see on. Yeah. The double, the double sided is definitely, I it's, don't know many people that own my work that don't have a pair of double sided earrings. They're, um, they're ooh, just that's so your gateway, your gateway piece. They're my, yeah, they're just yeah. so comfortable. Yes. But, you know, they're, you're gonna, people are going to stop you. They're going to talk to you. They're interesting. And you can talk on the phone. They're just an amazing design. Um, Thank you. I love, okay, I know you have a lot of options. Even right there is many options. Okay, on to our next, because I have more questions for nature versus future. Nina? Hi. Oh, someone had asked me in the yes. chat about, about water repellent, waterproof. Ooh. I don't know if she's still there, but. Um, I would love to know. Okay, so like most of the jackets that I have that are water, they're water resistant, um, 
but then I also have like the some of these bonded fabric ones and they're on my website and these are waterproof actually waterproof and then like my cocoon coat sorry and then like something like this is waterproof um I can kind of if you want to message me after direct I can kind of have a zoom call with you whoever asked me and I can show you the actual ones that are waterproof um but and did you want to ask something else <laughs> yes I do I'm like yeah. what is well, A, I love that you have such a size range and you're able, things are, can be a little bit adjustable. Could you show us like if maybe an example of buttoning it a different way? Oh, well, what I was saying is that they're actually, um, okay, so for, for yes. instance, um, the one I tried on the swerve coat, right? This is like, just to show you a classic. So like my body type, I have more of a pear shape, which I'm smaller on top and I have more hips. So for me, like I could fit a medium but my hips might be like a little bit, especially with my little extra COVID pounds. <laughs> now going more ML. So like I would actually, actually um, shift over the button placement on the bottom here. So it fits my body perfectly. So perhaps like on top, I'm super comfortable, but I need a little more hip room. So they're just hand sewn buttons. And I just actually will try it on, put a little pin where it would fit me the best. And then it, I can shift the placement so it just gets tailored to myself. The same thing with any of the pieces that if you need like a little more bust room, you actually can just shift the button placement on the bust and make it open up a little. And then you can leave the other buttons as is or just kind of play with the shape so it lays nicely on you. But it doesn't like, um, yeah, it doesn't do anything to the design. And a lot of the pieces that I do have, like that code has a big underlayer so you can actually play with the spacing. Well, that's cool without having to like go through and tailor it on and redo the exactly. line. It's yeah. kind of like Chanel. They have that built into their suiting that you can, oh, you build with it. Yeah. My sister used to sell Chanel couture. Uh -huh. So it was like, it's, <laughs> it's meant to go your whole life with you. And right. You yeah. Mature. The woman and your body changes and the, you grow with the piece. That's, I feel like one, that's really one of your design concepts. Right. Definitely. I mean, and I have different shapes for different, you know, different people like, that's why I miss about like when we do stuff and meeting people in person, because I can kind of see a body type and be like, Oh, I think this is going to work with you. Um, it's just because I do have a lot of different shapes. So, and do you do this? So now with, with people like doing it through zoom, are you still able to do some of these more, these adjustments or these little, um, for different, for different body types? Well, if some, if I can see you, I can kind yeah. of, we, discuss like what it is that you're looking into I had a customer we were talking about like uh, jacket lengths and stuff and mm. I was, okay how tall are you how tall am I how like what kind of body type and then I would just try on and we just kind of go back and forth as best as we can and then sometimes I do the same thing that Arza mentioned it's like I'll do kind of like a pick box so I'll say okay um I'll send you these three cuts and then you can decide um you know, which one of them works best on you. And you can just try it on at home in your own mirror, try it on with like your favorite sweater that you'd wear under it or, you know, however you like to, so. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, nice little, so you get that perfect fit for you. Thank you, Nina. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that everything beautiful. Okay, more, 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 more. We have Sue. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I, I wanted to see the big, we didn't see the big cookie jars. Big cookie jar. Okay, I'll show you a blue one this evening. Ooh. Um, I have two different color blues. So um, these jars, I, I, this evening I was talking about the big handle. Da, da, da. Um, we love function. These are great. Um, <laughs> somebody said coffee ground. Yes, of course. Um, flower. This would definitely hold um, probably like a five pound bag. Um, and then I take a lot of baths with bath salts. So I've got one next to my bathtub because I can. Mm -hmm. It's full of bath salts. <laughs> and um, yeah, the jars are great. And you can see that there's there's a, a myriad of them. They come in all 10 colors. And that, uh, so you have that, you have, I'm looking now, I'm seeing you have really bright colors, but I'm seeing the whites as well. Is that another version? Yeah. White is kind of like, so I have 10 different colors. And when we get to white, Here's the, the, I don't know, maybe you can tell there's a, this is a robin egg blue. It's a lighter mm -hmm. blue. And um, what's great about the white is that I can use any color dot in it. 
And so people have really been appreciating doing, I have one with a red, but you get the idea. All these different colors can go onto the white. And it's not always that every color can translate on top of each other. Um, so I just, when people ask about mixing around colors, I just guide them through what works and what doesn't. This for instance is a cute little vase that, um, this is my playtime. And so here's a, an example of Bermuda green with a tangerine dot mm. that um, does go really well over top. And, but not all colors can, can transfer except you got a, so, interesting play a lot. Yeah, you can see that the white plates can go, people are really having fun. Ooh. And this, what is the, how do people start out with like, do people, what's like a favorite like starter piece for a Sue? Folks are really heading for bowls first. It is such a cozy, um, a cozy fit. Everybody can relate to a bowl and everybody loves to, you know, to, oh, here's the Bermuda green again. I, and um, so I've got three different size bowls, a dessert size and um, for nuts and um, uh, salsa. I just finished some salsa today. I, I brought that one with me. Um, the medium cereal size bowl. And then I have a, a much larger ramen size bowl. Um, so after you're living with bowls for a while, the next natural thought in a year or so are plates. So then um, I've got the three different size plates, 11, nine, and seven. Um, wow. We talked about tumblers, didn't we? Yeah, so we did. I'm like, I love the oh, plate as yeah. even just display. I'm guessing people, I love the bowls as display too with fruit in them on the table. Yeah. Right? This is um, usually a salad pasta uh, size bowl. I call it a pasta bowl, but it's, a, it's, a, it's almost three inches deep. It's a, um, eight and a half inches wide. And this definitely is, I mean, uh, a good fruit bowl if you've got four people in the house or whatever. And this is a nice fruit, fruit bowl, um, but it, it's so multi-purpose because it's just a nice, really good size. That's what I look for in shapes is, um, I just basically start with the most common kind of shapes, but I'm the one who actually has to learn how to form these shapes with my own hands, with my body, with my body memory. And it takes me, you know, 100, 200, 400 times to practice to really get it. <laughs> but somehow I do love it. <laughs> and so I've been at it for so long. And, and that's where the consistency starts to come in because we need those details like it'll fit straight up and down in your dishwasher, you know, and over the years. Um, oh, love that. More and more and more functional and simple and easy to use. So, yeah. Oh, Sue, thank you. Be I love that. Oh, <laughs> little sneaks. Thanks. I know. As, and also mini bowls, everybody. Mini bowls. Okay. Mini bowls. I'll just say it again. That was like pure joy <laughs> when that came out. <laughs> I know. Everybody was like, oh, mini bowls. Okay. I know. <laughs> me, and I, I've got some in the kiln right now on the other side of this wall over here off screen. I've got a hundred in the kiln right now. So oh, run so on cute. mini bowls. Come and get okay. them. Mini bowls, everybody. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Good <laughs> gifts. Um, I want to ask Arza some questions because I know we didn't see that blue bag. And uh, maybe we'll see the red bag more. Wait, maybe you I'm pulled sure. up a red bag. Yeah, I pulled up. But I saw on the on the chat someone was telling me you have to show the who was it you have to show the um, cell phone pocket you have to show the lining so I'm um, your wish is my uh, command uh, but yes. I wanna, but while I'm showing the cell phone pocket you can ask me I can multitask you know yes so basically this is uh I think it was Darren that's asked me anyway hi. Uh, so that's the famous cell phone pocket. The easy thing, like just to, what, what's smart about it? Why people are asking me to show it? Because it's just there. So easily can be reached and found when you're looking for your precious cell phone to communicate with the universe. So it's just here. You just pull it. When you don't want people to uh, touch it, you just close the zipper and it's close to you. So I think that was the cell phone pocket that uh, was supposed. And, um, Megan, what was your question? I caught you. Well, I love that. I love that you're showing, but that big, I love that big red. Well, I guess you just show the similar design, that huge red one with the red lining there. Because right. you can, it is such a, you use a lot of geometry 
Yeah, um, I start, I, I told you, I start from two dimension and I move yeah. to two dimension as they uh, start to work. Like for example, this huge guy that looks like normal like that, but it will do the same thing. It will open to a medium. You can wear it on a medium silhouette and you can open it to a large and that will give you the bigger uh, option bag as well with the zipper pockets inside and the, it will be different lining here and there, it, you know, it will change. So the lining will change frequently as well. The, yeah, the diamond shape is, uh, is the signature piece. Um, being, yeah. That one more so than even the clutch because the clutch I feel like is super signature for you. So it's really depend like people uh, who can wear this bag. Some people say I can never wear this bag. And I said, I don't know. I don't see it as such as a striking. Uh, I'm not, I'm not big. I'm not tall. I mean, I might. No, I know I've met you. You are not, <laughs> not your height challenged. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can carry that, everyone can carry that. I have customers said, no, no, it's way too big on me. But I said, once you start wearing it and the diameter stretch and the sides is down and the bag gets slouchier and the leather is, uh, then it's it, it's not going to stay as it kind of will work with your body. I'm sure if people that are watching us have this bag, they can uh, vote for that. So it kind of kind of is with the time that you wear it. Um, yeah. And, uh, and of course, this one is the one that many people will say no but I'm not that brave I can't go out in public like that or but once they get it and they start wearing it they they love it it's like it's an easy easy to travel it like flat in a suitcase you can do a full day you can do half a day uh, this one is a, can you show that one a little closer is that that feels like metal if there if this is a distress metallic um I always say it's a family of three here it's two one is more espresso one is tan color and the third, I don't know if you can see much. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, we can, thank you, yeah. I was gonna ask, do you, how do you source such unique so I, material? I, I have, uh, my sources are here in the city. There is a guy that bring the stuff back from uh, Italy and he brings oh. swatches and stuff and I can see the letter before I buy it. So I can get swatches of uh, whatever I want and I kind of visual that in big and if I feel connected to the thing, I can go ahead and feel like other, you know, I'm not always 100% right in my choices, but I'm, I have to say through the year, I, uh, I kind of know what the customer will go. I, I have a few that will be like more limited edition that I'll get only like a 50 feet, like it will be like small and then there'll be like, um, you know, so they will say limited edition on them because I can't only like, five of that and this leather is not something that i can uh, reproduce so some people like that fact too that they'll get the last one or they'll get the one of the three and they'll be with other two people in this uh, uh universe that will have the same color size or whatever so it's interesting and again like uh, if people want to see later um i'm open to have a zoom call or whatever they need send them some picture or whatever so yeah it's i, I have much more than what you see here is just like a taste yeah. to some and, and each each style has ranges of color and each lining is unique too. Yeah. So even if the outside might be five, the inside might make it a little yeah. differentiated Definitely. as well. Yes. My my guy that helped me so do not like that uh, crazy. <laughs> but you know, I get tired with colors and uh, patterns quick. So I, I just cut a few and then oh no, I want this one now. I want this fabric. I want it so it's part of, you know, you get something, but it's yours and there to stay kind of unique. Yeah. I love that. Oh, I love that. Arza, thank you for sharing. Uh, what okay. I know, I guess I'm just, I'm just going to keep going, but Sam, mm -hmm. anybody, you can always ask questions in the chat. I am watching. Yes, I am watching. But Sam, you, you've been making special hats and we didn't touch on this special hat that you've been working on. Right. Well, yeah, because it's sort of a topic in and of itself. But yes, um, so I, you know, I, the point of it was that, you know, I was talking about how important it is to us to support um, uh, a woman's expression and a men's expression. I must say there are a couple men on this one. So I'll, I'll spread the love out um, for sure. But, um, but I was saying in the earlier party that there was, um, you know, when we, there was sort of this 
very big moment for I think all of us, um, many of us um, on November 7th when Kamala Harris, um, our vice president elect kind of walked out on that stage um, to Mary J. Blige. And I happened to be um, with my partner and his three little girls um, who also are half Asian, um, they're Cambodian. And um, so the first comment that came from one of them who uh, just turned eight was, um, she's like us because she had just learned that Kamala Harris is half Asian. And then the next comment that I'm not sure who it came from because the room was dark was, she needs a hat. So, um, the, so his three girls and my daughter, because um, between uh, Nora and I, between Nora and me, we have seven kids essentially, um, and four of them are girls. And so we worked with the four girls ages five to 14 to make a hat for Kamala Harris. Um, and it is, um, the girls chose the color and the shape in uh, one session with Nora and they blocked the hat all together. Um, and, um, and then actually chose the um, trim and what I, you know, there was no time for this last time because I sort of yammered so much, but um, the silk is actually a rich um, dark chocolate uh, dupioni silk, which comes mm -hmm. from India. And the peacock feathers, we actually sort of landed on the silk right away. We knew what silk we wanted because it is kind of a unique blue and there's, you know, we needed something that goes well with it. Um, but we went through a lot of different feathers and we're sort of choosing like big, bold tail feathers and we were choosing some hackle feathers and, and um, it was actually one of our little ones who saw the peacock eyes and we put them here and then we actually just did a little Googling because it was a bunch of young people in the studio and you know Kamala's name um, is uh, well, it has two different meanings. One is for the lotus flower, um, and the other is, it's it's another name, it's very associated with um, Lakshmi, the Hindu goddess. And um, she is often um, symbolized by the peacock feather. Um, so the peacock feather and the name Kamala are actually quite linked. Um, and then in addition, sort of the whole hat, we feel like is very much like the lotus flower, because it's sort of, like Kamala herself, kind of shows its beauty on its on the surface, but has its um, roots and its true identity really kind of down on the river in the riverbed, sort of below the water, um, which is kind of the symbolism that she speaks about of her name, um, the lotus flower. Because we, I mean, what was so important to us, and you know, I said this before, you know, this this statement is not about politics; it's about women and identity and kind of you know that this woman who is now um, vice president elect of our country as um, a woman of color, um, Asian, black, female, you know she's gone through a lot of compromise. She's made her way through a white man's world and yet she's held true to her, um, to her identity as well. She has not been she has not, she has not, she's been very um, forthright about where she comes from, what's important to her. And that, that's that been important to us and, and our business and, and the message that we think is, you know, we want to keep, continue to spread. And our teaching to your daughters. Well, and our teaching to our daughters and our sons. Um, and yeah. I, I don't, I never want to leave them out of this process because our sons have been, um, also very, very supportive and interested in the project. They just haven't been as hands on because, you know, this is a time for our girls to take center stage. Oh, I love that. They, I agree, including, including them. Thank you, you guys. I mean, I, white men or anything like no, that. Just no, no, obviously. <laughs> um, I want to make sure we get to any questions as I dominated that. And I don't want to, I want to make sure that people feel free to shout out. We could try more things on. You put things in the chat. I'll shout out for you if you want. What would I have a question for you? What's the best way to try to figure out working on a hat, doing it on Zoom? It likes yeah, so, color wise and color wise. What's the best way to do that? Who's talking? Is that June? Yes. It sounds like you, but I don't see you. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so Zoom or FaceTime. I mean, it just depends on your device of choice. Um, so. Um, uh, Zoom or FaceTime um, is great. Uh, what what we always do is we actually come to this same space. Nora works upstairs. I work 
here downstairs, but we've sort of set this up as our, um, you know, custom hat making area where we're kind of um, able to try on different shapes for you, um, talk about what colors you like, what kinds of trims you like, and then we take it upstairs where we actually have all the silks and the feathers and the, you know, where we can kind of go over some of, some of the specifics with you if we haven't honed in on it right down here. All right, but you, I think you've got so much experience that you probably also can tell by looking at shape of face or hair and stuff like that, different styles. Yeah, I mean, work, we, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for saying that because I didn't want to be pushy about that. But yes, we would, in <laughs> the very beginning of our conversation with you, because we're able to see, um, we will sort of direct you in where, you know, in the, in the area that we think would be best suit you um, from what we're seeing from your hair and your face okay. and all of that. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. In my future. Awesome. It's in my future. Is, I know that. is it in your future, Jimmy? <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Any, anybody else? There was a question in, can you hear me? There was yes. a question in the chat about other colors that the plaid. Oh, the hat. Has. Yes. Oh, the kepi? It, yeah. Because I'm just in the chat that, that Nora named it. Yeah. So, um, of course, I don't have them all at my fingertips, but so where... Have I put them? Because yes, we have them in lots of colors and um, many of them are actually on the website. So what I showed you what was actually just sort of what was within my reach. Um, and you know, here, another one that's in my reach is um, pink. So this one is just um, the fiber. So this is all, all wool fiber. This one is a wool fabric that we've felted um, merino wool into. So we have a needle felting machine. So we're able to make sheets of the fabric and then we sew it. And that's why it's this really soft, um, crushable, warm, thick. I don't know if you can tell from the thickness, yes. but yeah, it's a nice, warm, cozy hat. And we have, um, you know, we have different stands that we make out of these, these fabrics. I know. Can, and do you put the stripes in? And are you building the flannel in the way that I'm, like, you putting all the texture in? Like, how? Okay, they were geeking out. Flannel. What I have, I have this um, different style, but I have more colors in them because they happen to be right here. So um, there's a couple things happening. This one is two colors of merino wool fiber. So it's been carded into sheets, red on the outside, black on the inside. And I've felted it on a machine, a needle felting machine. So you can see that it's got some good texture to it, right? But mm -hmm. it's super warm and um, has some good body. Um, this is a men's suiting that we felted, in this case, here, sort of this like midnight blue in the inside. And, um, this style, because it doesn't have a belt, it has a drawstring. Um, and it's, we called this the, we call it the hunter cap, but because of these art parties, we sort of coined it the, the boyfriend hat because it is what my boyfriend wears. Um, but it's so nice and roomy, like he's got a gigantic head. I mean, like literally gigantic. And he wears this, but I can um, wear it as well because it's got a little drawstring in it and it doesn't look gathered or anything because it's this nice, cushy kind of smushy wool. And then again, here's another like men's suiting, but with um, kind of like a cobalt blue on the inside. So it gives it a different look. So it's two different things, Megan, like the, there Love is that. no real yeah. pattern to the like fiber on fiber. If the men's suiting, together. then you put the yeah. wool. So yes, we'll I love that. We'll use well, wool fabrics or we'll use like the thinner, you know, the men's suiting. Mm -hmm. We'll use, um, sometimes we use flannel. It, it sort of depends on what we, what sort of strikes our fancy. <laughs> so. I know I love that. Everyone ha uses such, has such attention to their details and materials. I know like Carla with her paper, yeah. Nina with the special material. We didn't talk about the clay body with Sue. I know uses like a special, I love all that. So. We, you have to come back and learn more at the next art party, right? Right? Yeah. I want to make sure. Any other questions before we go? We're getting up on that time. It's nine. It has been so fun to share art with you guys in 2021, our first party. We are super excited for our next party on Saturday. Um, 
and we'll just we'll keep we're keeping we're going every week we're having new parties new artists we're really excited uh feel free to check out our website we're going to keep updating and all the artists websites are on there right now thank you thank you thank you, you guys thank you, thank you. My yeah. next door neighbors from growing up are here. Oh, <laughs> they have stories. 